because of the Lord's covenant and the laws, the saints of God persevered in loving brotherhood, for there was always one spirit in them and one faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We commemorate, we celebrate today the memorial of St. Albert the Great, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, a German Dominican prior who brought a lot change to the teachings of the Church. And so to prepare our hearts and minds to celebrate this Eucharist, with a humble and, and contrite heart, let us examine ourselves. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you who met the Bishop St. Albert the Great, by his joining of human wisdom to divine faith. Grant, we pray, that we may so adhere to the truth he taught, that through the progress of learning, we may come to a deeper knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. There grew a sinful offshoot, Antiochus Epiphanes, son of King Antiochus, once a hostage in Rome. He became king in the 137th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. It was then that there emerged from Israel a set of renegades who led many people astray. Come, they said, let us teach, let us reach an understanding with the pagans surrounding us. For since we separated ourselves from the pagans, from them, many misfortunes have overtaken us. This proposal proved acceptable, and a number of the people eagerly approached the king, who authorized them to practice the pagan observances. So they built a gymnasium in, in Jerusalem, such as the pagans have, disguised their circumcision, and abandoned the holy covenant, submitting to the heathen rule as willing slaves of impiety. Then the king issued a proclamation to the whole kingdom that all were to become a single people, each renouncing his particular customs. All the pagans conformed to the king's decree. 
and many Israelites chose to accept his religion, sacrificing to idols and profaning the Sabbath. On the 15th day of Chislev, in the year 145, the king erected the ab abomination of desolation above the altar. And altars were built in the surrounding towns of Judah and incense offered at the doors of houses and in the streets. Any books of the law that came to light were torn up and burned. Whenever anyone was discovered possessing a copy of the covenant or practicing the law, the king's decree sentenced him to death. Yet, there were many in Israel who stood firm and found the courage to refuse unclean food. They chose death rather than contamination by such fair or profanation of the Holy Covenant, and they were executed. It was a dreadful wrath that visited Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your will. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your will. I am seized with indignation at the wicked who forsake your law. Though the nets of the wicked ensnared me, I remembered your law. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your will. Redeem me from men's oppression, and I will keep your precepts. Those who harm me unjustly draw near. They are far from your law. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your will. Salvation is far from the wicked who are heedless of your statutes. I look at the fiddlers with disgust. They ignore your promise. Give me life, O Lord, and I will do your will. the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus drew near to Jericho, there was a blind man sitting at the side of the road begging. When he heard the crowd going past, he asked what it was all about. And they told him that Jesus the Nazarene was passing by. So he called out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The people in front scolded him and told him to keep quiet. But he shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and ordered them to bring the man to him. And when he came up, asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Sir, he replied, let me see again. Jesus replied, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. And instantly his sight returned, and he followed him, praising God. And all the people who saw it gave praise to God for what has happened.
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's the first day of the week. We begin the journey. And I invite you as you step into this week to fall back to what I spoke yesterday. Temporary and eternal. Temporary and eternal. We step into the gospel text. There's always this desire in all of us to reach the ultimate end, which is eternal. And just like the blind man, we all want to see. There is this great thirst and desire in us to see the Lord. But the danger is there will always be the temptation of the crowd who will lead you back to the temporary things of life. The crowds around you will seduce you who will lead you into different paths and tell you to be silent of your desire to see Christ. These are the temptations that you will find. But the beauty of this man whom we call Bartimaeus was he was persistent like the widow on Saturday. Persistence and perseverance just to see the Lord. Give me, Lord, life and I will do your will. The will of this man, Bartimaeus, was to see Jesus. And that is the desire of this eternal life. You find this very clearly in the first reading of the book of Maccabees. There was a king, King Antiochus Epiphanes. He didn't know what to do and how to lead the people. But he was listening to the crowds and the people around. And they said, hey, come on, let's follow the Gentile world. They are doing very well. And so the king said, let's follow them. Let's follow the crowd. Let's be seduced by them. And so they lost everything, abomination. They started to be seduced by everything around them. And so what they did, they built gymnasiums. And they started having things around them. They lost the idea of circumcision. They broke the covenant. Everything they did was against God. And they lost everything. But there was a handful of people who stood steadfast to God. And they were killed because they were the martyrs who stood to the will of God. My dear sisters and brothers, many of us, especially as you are drawing into Christmas, will be tempted in many things. You will be tempted by the advertisements and the shoppings and the glamour and the glitter. But did you get to see the face of Jesus? You and I will be tempted. I used to say this to many a uh, Many a times with my friends, when they go for pilgrimages, you'll always be tempted by many things around. Many things you'll be tempted with. And then when you come back, you're cluttered with many things. But did you see the face of Jesus? Did you see the face of Jesus? Let us ask the Lord the grace that we may not be tempted by the temporary things, but seek the eternal life, just like the blind man, Bartimaeus. Because at the end of the gospel, he followed Jesus along the way. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Most merciful God, pour out your blessings upon these offerings and confirm us in faith that as St. Albert the Great professed by his life and teaching, we too may follow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, Father, with angels and saints, we declare your glory, and with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, Father, he broke the bread. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, our sisters and brothers have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Albert the Great, St. Faustina and John Paul II, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life, to praise, to glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins upon the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us take a moment to offer that peace to one another. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ be blessed. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it in eternity, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Look with favor, Lord, we pray. As we commemorate the example of St. Albert the Great, we may always strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. Pray for the Synod. We stand, stand before, before you, Holy Spirit, Spirit as we, we gather together, together in, in your name. name. With, with you, you alone, alone to guide, guide us, Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed day and do stay safe. Same to you, Father.